Welcome back there, buds. I've got a quick, easy little rocking chair project here behind me, up on the bench. I'm gonna film this all with my cell phone. See how it goes. Could be good, could be bad. So, what we need to do, the arm is already broken off of it, as you can see there. We just have to knock it apart, re-glue it, clean it up, and give those arms a little bit of a fresh darkness finish. They got a little bit light over the years. So let's take a look and get on in there. Here is the one arm I was saying about. As you can see, those arms, they always lose that finish. Really lighten up over the years of use. The rest of the chair though, other than just a little bit of dust, is looking great. That'll just, I don't even know what, uh, I mean it really doesn't need much of anything. We'll probably just use a little bit of Howard's Restore finish on it. For this, for the arms, probably just a little bit of uh, dye with the shellac, get that color back. But uh, yeah, everything's just a little bit loose. Got to knock it apart here and re-glue it. So many nails, so many nails. Why does everybody use so many nails? You know what? Sometimes just gonna just break it. You gotta take a step back to get a step forward. Or whatever it was Paul Abdul said. Two steps forward, one step. One step back and couple forward. All right, we got it off. Now it's just a matter of pulling nails very carefully, not to damage anything anymore. Don't want to give yourself more work than you have to. come out. That would be too easy though. Come on out. Come on. Get out of there. Could normally just drill it, but with all those nails in there, you gotta just dig it all out. Then get pliers in there, figure out a way how to get that nail out of there. It definitely comes from that. No, nope, it's from the outside, right underneath that side. Of Why would you do that? <laughs> Let's look where they put that nail. Down underneath there, and you can see it goes across there. Anytime you're knocking a part of chair or any type of furniture, always watch out for that because too many times I have forgotten to check if there is a nail going across there, which is very common. And if you're trying to knock it apart, phew, stuff is just going to explode on you. See it coming through that side. Somehow get this on there. Tap it out that way. I'll go this way. Oh, 
go. Let's get it right out. Now, Put this on there to protect that wood from your pliers. Got that out nice and clean. Just have to put a little bit of filler in there with that nail out of there. Now I can just take my drill with the bit that size, ream it out, and it's good as new. Start in reverse so you don't dig in. Try it now, go real slow. Next step in knocking apart this chair is to get these corner support blocks out so we can get that chair, get that spread open. A few of these are already loose. Sometimes they can be a real pain to get. So we'll see. These look terrible. Loosen it a little. Sometimes they're really on there, and if you can even just get one side off, that's really all that matters. I think we'll do that with that one. Just pull these nails. Just trying to get the chair apart. Not trying to rebuild it. And we can put some type of screw or something back in there and put those nails maybe. Go around and get the rest. I got them all out. Nothing broke. Got all the nails out. Got them all labeled so I know which goes which. And you know that the big hole side goes down because that's where the screw goes up and through. So that's easy. Now I just got a give her a couple taps. I'm sure that there's nails holding this, so I gotta be very careful. Because those old nails in there can just grab a hold of whatever wood if it's going cross grain or whatever, and it can just pull it and really ruin your day. But at this point, I can see down in there, you can see that there are none. Looking good on that side, too. Get this all knocked apart. For something like this, I can just clean that up. I'm not going to completely disassemble this. It's not really necessary. I could just get in there with my brush, work that glue there into those dowels, and push it back together, wiggle it around a little bit, get that glue spread. I can still spread the glue there at the end of that piece. So to save a little bit of time, I don't think I will take it apart. You know what? I think I will. <laughs> There's so much dust and uh, stuff down in there. It's probably best on this piece just to knock it apart just so I can clean that out because all that old dust and crud since they've been loose for so long, all that build up in there, even if I glued it, it probably wouldn't go back together tightly because there's just so much just, you know, stuff in there. So let's get it apart. I'm going to take this back off first. And this back is nice and sturdy. Usually 
might need a little bit of glue just along that bottom rail but these tops these usually stay pretty tight and this one it's a little bit it's not it's not really gonna be a deal breaker I think I'm just gonna leave that as is this isn't like a full rebuild a full you know refinish if I was gonna take it all apart strip it down you know refinish it all every joint would be re-glued but on something like this just to get it back in working order I'm not gonna worry if I hear a creak <laughs> so this base is the most important part definitely want that to be nice and sturdy because that is where all your stress will be And just label as I go if I think I need to. Makes it a little bit easier when you put it all back together. Sometimes I can just remember where everything went. Especially if I just knock it apart and put it right back together. But if I know it's going to sit around a week or two, I'm going to want to mark that. Because if you're like me, have zero memory. Definitely want to remind yourself. Today, I don't need to. Lay everything out. Obviously, no. Looks like somebody was in here before me. That wood's been split. Looks like it's still uh, held up a little bit, but this joint didn't hold up. Looks like they uh, had their way with some Gorilla Glue. One thing that I want to do before I start to glue this up is just to, I drilled out quarter inch holes Got some quarter inch dowels, I'm going to plug up the bottom where the rockers screwed into, they were all very loose, so we will fill those holes, drill new ones, and it will be nice, sturdy.
I got that all screwed in place. Remove these clamps. These are all dry. Now we can go ahead, put that seat on. Now we got that one last screw. Seat's nice and tight. Get these clamps off of here. Should be able to test it out, give her a rock. This bucko break is brought to you by my buds at cwpress.com. Contact them today for all of your t-shirt, sticker, and custom screen printing needs. And say hello to their shop dog named Logo. Starting to get some snow melt here, buds. Until spring's coming, birds are chirping, the sun's almost shining through. Everything's a treat in the woods, huh, Buck? Buck! Ah! Just so happy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Come on. Come on, buddy. Quit eating all the brown snow, Buck. Burrow! Come on. steel wool, diluted Windex, give it a good cleaning. Just get all that old, that old schmutz off of there. That's a good one. <laughs> Spraying it down here. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down, get rid of any glue residue or anything like that. Let's just hit it with that, hit it with that. That's simple. Now that I got that all cleaned up, I got it taped. On the arms here, I don't want any of this restore finish hitting the arms because I will do something different with them. Everybody always asks, what do I use for something like this? This is easily found at most of your big box hardware stores. I really like it. It just eats into that existing finish, has a little bit of a stain to it that colors in any imperfections, makes it look pretty good. I've used it for years, and it has lasted on pieces for years, and it will just fill in, there's a couple light spots, just wherever there might be like a scratch or ding or something that lost a little bit of its finish, it'll just give it some of that life back. And I just apply that with 4 rot, wiping with the grain, and then wipe it off with a rag. It's really that easy.
now that I got that all cleaned up and wiped down looks pretty good what I like to do is put it on fairly heavy let it set for a little bit then give it a good wipe down then after about five or ten minutes or so come back and wipe down the whole chair again it doesn't look too bad so now I got the arms taped off the opposite way and I will just scuff these really quick with a little bit of 220 and get set up to give these a little bit of finish. Last but not least, I'm going to take my amalgamator here. This is basically just a shellac with its own proprietary blend of different solvents and emulsifiers and different things to eat into that finish and it is a finish itself so I just made myself a little Balled up a piece of uh, lint-free cloth, which is very important when you're doing any kind of a wipe on finish. And I have my my dye. Oh, who's that fella? What's up, bud? What you doing? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I just wet the pad with this, put a couple drops of that. Little goes a long way. That'll give me my coloring. This will help bring back whatever finish is on there and build up a little bit of finish. We'll let that dry and go on to the last and final step. Too bad, that matches up pretty well there. That will dry up. I'm sure that's probably already dry. You can just keep building that, which I will not. I will let that dry. There it is all set up and dried. I guess you could technically just stop at that point, but it would probably just, uh, wear off 
like it was over the next, I don't know, few years, century. <laughs> but I'm just going to put on a little bit of a top coat with a little bit of white bomb poly. I could normally just uh, spray it with a little bit of can lacquer or something, but since I had already done all this, you know, to everything else, I don't want to worry about any kind of overspray. Poly is a very, very, very durable surface, and if you do it right, it doesn't look like shit. So, <laughs> that wipe on is just a very thin down poly, and um, it's just easier to wipe on. It's not that real thick, goopy, you know, you could just buy that, add mineral spirits to it, make your own wipe on. But I just so happen to have that old can sitting around that I still use from time to time for things like this. And it works great. Dries real quick. I'm going to just wipe on two coats and we'll be done. Once again, I got that balled up, lint free rag. So to give it a couple, couple squishes, get that finish in there. Said this is just a very thin, little thin protective coat. Nothing crazy. Something to lock in that color so we don't lose that. A lot of oil in this makes it so easy it just glides right on reload that pad Give it a squish That amalgamator also acts as a barrier to any contaminants in the wood. So we don't have to worry about any problems in this finish. Round two, buds. There's a little trick too, if you get impatient, don't want to wait. Drive that up. Well buds, now that it's all done and finished and back together, we just need to figure out if it really rocks or not, so let's try it out.